Welcome to my final Mountain West Bowl Game Preview of my Mountain West Bowl Game Preview Series. It's also the final Mountain West Bowl Game of the season. It's going to be 7-5 Wyoming taking on 9-4 Ohio in the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl. This game is going to be on Friday, 30th of December, so a few days from now. 2.30 p.m. Mountain Central Time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, sorry, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Barstool Sports app. So not a normal televised game. This is going to be on the Barstool Sports app. It sounds like they have a lot of exciting things planned. I'll put the link to the Barstool Sports site where you can watch this game in the description of this video. So just go right on there or you can just search it. It should be pretty easy to find. So a little bit of an unconventional format with this bowl game. But I know the folks over at Barstool are very excited for this one since it has been a long time coming. Tried to host this game last year. Boys State pulled out because of <clears throat> COVID reasons. There's also a lot of other pressures on the schools uh, to not play in that bowl game. Boy State ended up backing up out. Luckily, both of these teams, Ohio and Wyoming, sticking with their commitment and playing in this matchup. So I'm excited to see what happens with this game. It's going to be an interesting one because as we're going to talk about when we get to storylines, there are some key players missing from this matchup for both teams. which is going to impact the results. So this is the third Sorry, this is the seventh Mountain West bowl game of the year. They have so far gone three and three. That's where the number three number was in my head. Uh, they have so far gone three and three in bowl games. It's been a little bit of an interesting start. They started off great, actually. Three and one in bowl games. Fresno State, Air Force, Boise State all getting wins in their bowl games. Air Force a little bit surprising, getting a big win against a Power 5 team um, to get to 10 wins on the season. Boise State also getting to 10 wins on the season. Really a nice way for those three teams to end their year. But then disappointing losses by San Jose State, San Diego State, and Utah State most recently has put the Mountain West at 3-3, three and three, which actually ends up being exactly what I am with my bowl game predictions so far, also 3-3. Three and three. So batting 50%, but this is potentially a game where the Mountain West can get to 4-3, and three, end the season on the right note with a win, uh, an overall winning record in the postseason to set themselves up well for 2023. So we're going to go through storylines today. We've already talked a little bit about the game itself, but we'll talk about some storylines. We'll talk about top players for both of these teams, and then we'll talk about keys to the game for both of these programs and end with a score prediction. I want to know your thoughts in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this bowl game, what you think about my prediction, what you think about my key players. Let me know all about it. I want to hear it in the prediction in the comment section of this video. This is a discussion with you and I'm excited to have it. So let's get into looking at the bowl game specifically. Ohio is actually favored in this one, given a 53.9% chance of winning and a 1.5 point advantage according to Vegas. Storylines for both of these programs. Looking at Ohio, well, first off, this is the first time since 2016 that they were able to play in the MAC championship game. So it was really a good season for Ohio. Right up there through the end of the year, nine and four, had a chance to get to 10 wins there in the MAC championship game, losing to Toledo 17 to seven. A big part of that, a big reason for that, was the loss of their incredible 3,000 plus yard uh, quarterback, Curtis Rook. Out with an injury, also had 25 touchdowns uh, on the season. So he's out. He's not playing in this bowl game. Their second string guy stepped up, got a win for them in the regular season, lost in the MAC championship game. So he's one and one so far as a starter this year. Chance for him to get to two and one in the Bulls with a win in the bowl season. For Wyoming, this is a team that also almost played in their championship game. So not also because Ohio played in their championship game, but they also ended almost ended this year pretty strong. You know, they had a chance to play in the Mountain West Championship game if they beaten Boise State, a team they lost to 17 to 20, that close. And if they then beaten Fresno, a team they end up getting crushed by, but I think that a lot of that was the fact they weren't playing for anything. If they beaten Boise State, I think that might have been a game. But if they'd beaten both those teams to end their year, they would have played Fresno State in the Mountain West Championship game. However, lost both of those games, ended up seven and five. So this again was a team that could have ended up, you know, nine and three, ended up seven and five, didn't go to their Mountain West Championship game, and they're really kind of trying to correct things here in the postseason to end on a positive note before they go into the offseason season. They are also missing a major key player, actually several players that we'll talk about here in a second, but their main key player that they're going to be missing is they don't have Swen. He has been their offensive powerhouse for them. It's been a run first kind of team here at Wyoming, and he has been the center, the spear point of that run first attack. Um, there was he, there were some issues. He was kind of dismissed because of some violation of team rules, or there was some he was being, you know, kind of pushed to the sideline there because of violation of team rules. Um, he said he didn't see eye to eye with the coaches 
didn't see and that uh, Fresno State wasn't uh, sorry Wyoming wasn't fitting his style and um, they kind of elected to part ways there I think you can kind of read in between the lines here the season's not going the way that it, they want that Swen or really anybody at Wyoming wanting it to tensions are high Swen has a couple of words with the coaches and ends up being dismissed or both of them agreeing to leave the team there again none of that is official as of what happened but I, that, that's my best guess you know, his, his own statement saying that they weren't seeing eye to eye, that he was violated for unspecified violations of team rules. He's decided to transfer, and now he's backed out of that, and he's now just going to go straight to the draft. Best of luck to him. I thought he was a great replacement for Valade, and uh, I would have loved to see him in this bowl game. But I also understand um, some of the circumstances that are going on and why he's not playing. But it is going to make a major impact here for Wyoming, because now it's going to fall on Peasley, just like... For Ohio, it's now going to fall on Harris to take the lead here um, at their quarterback position. So it's going to be an interesting matchup with a couple of guys that weren't necessarily the ones leading the way here having to step up. Now, talking about guys that were leading the way, top players here. For Ohio, now that you don't have Rourke, their top player, as far as I see it, is going to be, and I'm probably going to mess this name up a little bit, but uh, Sei Bangura. Again, let me know in the comments if I totally butchered that, and I do apologize. Amazing running back, a freshman um, for them, at least as far as total, um, as far as eligibility left. Uh, I believe he has actually played for two seasons already, but he is a freshman for them. Uh, 940 yards of rushing, 12 touchdowns, 4.8 yard average, 208 yards receiving, and also two touchdowns through the air. So 14 touchdowns overall and over 1,000 yards of total offense. This is a guy who you're going to want to lean on. We'll talk about that later when we get to the keys of the game. But this is a guy who can definitely make up for, it's been a balanced attack, so you know you can't just swing totally away from that and become only run. So you know there's going to have to be some stepping up by the second string quarterback here for Ohio but this is definitely a guy who can help alleviate the issues there with the loss of your starting quarterback for Wyoming because you really don't have your top guy on offense I'm gonna have to look at the defense here for a top player they do have a great linebacker um, Eaton Gibbs here 111 tackles two sacks a fumble recovery and a touchdown he has been a great defensive player for them all over the field, I mean, 111 tackles. That is a total utility player for them in the uh, linebacker core. He's definitely going to be someone who's going to need to step up well and match up well against the running back here out of Ohio if Wyoming's going to want to have success. Now, talking about keys to the game here, we'll look at Ohio first. Uh, for them, it's going to be lean on your running back. You know, Harris has been okay as a starter. He hasn't looked anywhere near the level of quarterback Rourke was, but he has looked okay as a starter in two games. Now, this is, mind you, through two games, cumulative stats. 359 yards passing, a touchdown, and an interception in his two starts. Uh, he has, however, failed to complete a game with over 55% completions. The first game, it was somewhere in the 47% realm, and last game, it was like 53 54%. I don't have those specific numbers written down, but it was somewhere in that range. So he's not yet shown that he can complete with accuracy at the same level, but he is still getting close to the 200-ish yards a game passing. Now, if you can lean and incorporate that with a good running game, you're going to have success, but you really are going to want to lean on this. Again, you don't want to rush Harris into this game. Wyoming's probably going to struggle offensively. You're going to have time. You're going to have opportunities for some mistakes that are probably going to be made by Wyoming. So you're going to have some opportunities to get Harris into this game slowly. Let the running game develop. Build up some energy there. Don't give Wyoming any huge momentum or make any quick mistakes here, which turns the ball over and allows Wyoming to kind of get this game out of hand. So that's going to be the big key here. It's going to be lean on your running game or lean on your key, lean on your running back, that key player that we mentioned earlier here for Ohio. I'm not going to try and say his name again because I'm pretty sure that I butchered it the first time and one time is enough. Um, looking at Wyoming, there it's going to be kind of the opposite. You don't have a running game right now. I mean, this is... I can't tell you how bad this is. They didn't just lose Swin. They also are going to be without three other running backs in this game due to injury or transfers. You know, they have their number one court running back with Swin, 1,000 yards rusher. Their second guy, McNeely, he's injured. He's out. He had almost 400 or 350 yards rushing, 356. James is injured. He was had 346. And the guy after that, um, again, name, name I'm probably going to butcher a little bit, but um, Brosh, B-R-A-B-R-A-A-S-H. He had he is transferring. He had 91 yards rushing. That's it. Wyoming doesn't have a running back on the roster with recorded carries this year that is going to be playing in this bowl game. 
That means it is now on Peasley. He is their leading runner by default. He has had an okay season running, 330 yards rushing, two touchdowns, but his passing game has not been his, his high point here. You know, 1,388 yards passing, nine touchdowns, eight interceptions, almost as many interceptions as touchdowns. He has only one 200 plus yard game this season. It is going to be, it's going to have to be the game of his life if Wyoming wants to stand a chance in this. He's not just playing for the team here. He, I think he's also playing for a roster spot, honestly. You know, Craig Ball has done it before, brought in transfers or developed guys who can take over. Peasley is not guaranteed to be the starter next year. He's got, he hasn't shown anything very impressive this season. And if he doesn't show something in this bowl game, I think it's very, very likely that someone is going to be taking his place next year so he's not just playing for this game he's also playing for his future here at Wyoming he has got to have the game of his life when you don't have a running game or you have potentially an untested running back having to take the reins of a run-based offense that is not a good look he has got to step up he's got to have the game of his life both passing and running I would expect to see a heavy dose of him in both roles but maybe more of a passing focus here for Wyoming, which is so weird because they haven't done that this year. But I think you could see a little bit of a passing focus here because he's honestly the best player left on this offense as far as someone who's a reliable starter who can take the reins of this offense altogether. So who is, what's my prediction here? You know, this is a tough, tough game to predict because you're not looking at the season. You're not looking at the teams that came through the season and predicting based on that. These are going to look like completely different teams in this bowl game. Ohio is going to look a little bit more recognizable because they did get two games in with the replacement. But Wyoming is going to look like a completely different team. Generally, it is easier to replace a running back than it is to replace a quarterback. You know, so if this was pure, if Swen was out, but there was a established second string player up ready to play, then I probably put the nod towards Wyoming. You know, and in the case where. Ohio was coming in with a backup quarterback, had seen much playing time, and they were both kind of making fresh starts, the second strings in both positions. I put the nod towards the team with a backup running back coming in because your quarterback, I mean, he is your quarterback. He's the guy who controls your entire offense. You don't want a fresh face in there playing the first time in the bowl game, but that's not what Ohio has. They have a guy who's come in and played two games. He's not seasoned by any means, but he's played two games. He's not fresh-faced at this point. He is going to come into here with a lot of time to prep between the MAC Championship game and the bowl game, especially a late game. That's going to favor and help both these teams, actually. Being so late, it's going to allow them to help prep their second-string guys to come up here and take the reins, or in Wyoming's case, their seventh-string guy. Um, but it's going to help them be able to prepare for this matchup. But it's going to be tough. However, I would say that Ohio has the advantage here in that they have a solid second string. Wyoming, you look at this, they have eight running backs on their roster. Four of those guys, all four of the guys who've recorded stats on the year, unavailable because of what we talked about earlier. Their only other player on this roster who has recorded a carry in his entire career for Wyoming is the uh, running back Hollingsworth. He has one carry for two yards in 2021. That is it. Every other player on this roster, there's three other running backs, all this is freshmen. I'm not sure if they're true freshmen or not. I would assume they are because they don't have any recorded stats at all. So they've either been playing on the practice squad or they've been, you know, red shirting, haven't seen any playing time, or they're fresh faced to the team. I didn't dig deep, too deep into it because these are no names. These are guys who have not shown anything yet that one of them or a few of them are going to have a big opportunity to ha make a statement for next season and to really start their career off uh, in an interesting way here. So a couple of these guys are assumingly going to be getting some first carries ever. Now, Wyoming has been a team that has mixed it up in the running game a little bit. They've had quarterbacks used in the run game, like we said there, with a 330 yards rushing. They also have Clemens on this roster, who's kind of built like a running back. I mean, wouldn't that be weird if you had Clemens and also Peasley out there in the backfield, basically. Peasley is the quarterback, and Clemens is the running back in this case. That would be really weird to see. Um, but then you also have the fact that they've used wide receivers in this roster. I believe that three or four wide receivers with recorded carries on the year. So you could see potentially a wide receiver being shoved in that role. I would assume that one of these four guys, Jones, Richardson, or um, Jordan Vaughn, would see, and Hollingsworth, like we said already, would see some kind of role in this offense, maybe becoming the dominant back but it's going to be a little bit of a peek into the future here for Wyoming because none of these guys have shown anything this year or anything in their careers. And this is going to be an opportunity to maybe see who becomes that next running back when your top four guys are all gone. I've never seen a roster this decimated. A couple of those guys were choices, but then also the odds of a couple of guys getting injured and you literally are without your top four running backs. That is insane. 
this is going to be a really, really hard game for Wyoming to come in here and win. I really think that, unfortunately, the Mountain West is going to go to three and four in bowl games this season, really through no fault of their own here in the fact that Wyoming really can't help it here. I think that they're going to put up a struggle. I think their defense is going to have a pretty solid game, especially against the backup quarterback here. So I do think that Ohio is going to carry this one, a low-scoring affair, 24-13. to 13. I just, unless Peasley goes off, Unless he passes for 300 yards, Wyoming wakens a dormant receiving game that hasn't really been there all this season. You know, Peasley throws for like 250 and rushes for 100. Is, is the Mountain West Bowl game offensive player of the year. I just don't see Wyoming overcoming the hurdles of losing so many guys um, when you're a run-based team. I mean, this isn't like this was a pass-heavy, air raid style team, and now they're out four running backs. This is a team that's been run first and now doesn't have any running backs at all. This is going to be a tough game for Wyoming to win. Of course, I'm rooting for them to win. And it'd, be, it'd be nice to get to 4-3 and three in my bowl game predictions, but I would rather the Mountain West get to 4-3 and three versus myself. So I'm going to be rooting for Wyoming win, but I think, unfortunately, this is going to end up with an Ohio victory um, and a little bit of a, another loss there for the Mountain West but a chance maybe to show something for the future here for Wyoming that they can build on, that Craig Bull can build on. I think he's one of the greatest coaches in the Mountain West. Uh, he's really good at developing talent where nobody else really sees anything. So if anybody can win this game with, with what he has been thrown, Craig Bull can do it. It's just going to be a very, very tough one. So that's my prediction. Let me know what I got wrong. Let me know what I got right. Let me know what your score predictions are in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Great Mountain West content. It's not just Boy State stuff. There's a heavy Boy State focus, but it's not just Boy State stuff. Mountain West content all throughout the year. I did the bowl game previews. I'll be doing a conference previews. I'll be talking about all the big shifts and changes uh, throughout the offseason. So make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Big Blue!